For the last two days, I've basically only played the new Marita map in Battlefield 5, and I'm sure many of you out there are exactly the same, but in my videos I've only really spoken about it within the context of its conquest layout. I have been having a lot of fun fighting some really intense battles in the middle of the map around the C and the D flags, you know where the play zone has just been shrunk down and it's clearly been designed to just push two huge teams of players together and create that meat grinder mentality and I think it does a pretty good job at it but there will be some players that don't really like that. I did say in a previous video though that I wanted to talk about the breakthrough layout here because I had a couple of issues with it and that's what we're going to do in this video today. I think I'm close to about 10 rounds of attack and defend on breakthrough now for Marita and I think that gives me enough of an idea of how the map plays out most of the time and it does cancel out some of that day one settling in mentality where nobody really has any idea how the map and mode is going to play and they just run headlong at objectives and just start playing in the most basic ways possible. No strategy really forms on the first day, no tactics really happen at that point. So I've kind of discounted my experience from the first day, moved into the second day and games were a lot more consistent. So without further ado, let's get into things. So first of all, we're going to start this video off by being quite critical. The first sector of Breakthrough on Marita is, in my opinion, quite problematic. Even if after the first couple of days, people have now gotten used to what happens and have worked their way around some of the issues that, that can appear, I still think that the first sector is designed in a way that really isn't conducive to a good gameplay experience. So if you look at this freeze frame of the map showing the first sector here, I think it's very obvious as to what the problem is. There is only one flag. The capture zone of that flag is very, very small, and the defenders, they get a really nice sheltered move forwards from their spawn point, whereas the attackers, they have to run across very lightly covered ground. Once you start the round, you'll find as an attacker that you are running straight up a hill towards the point as well, which means the defenders alongside that nice covered advance, they also get the high ground, which seems a little bit unfair in my opinion. Looking at this layout that we have at the moment, I think I can work out what the dice designers were trying to do with this first sector. I think they were trying to create a scenario whereby if the attackers all launch at the objective at once and they capture it on a big first push, then the first sector would be over and done with very, very quickly and gameplay could then move on to more interesting parts of the map. This is what happens most of the time. Attackers push up very, very quickly before the defenders have a chance to set themselves up. They get on the flag burn and they capture it, forcing the match into a new, bigger, more exciting sector. That's fine. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes the attackers don't succeed with their first push forwards. They get outnumbered and the capture of the flag just doesn't happen. Attackers then need to take what limited cover they actually have and they need to try and stay on the flag burn until a new wave of reinforcements can come and give them some backup. The issue here now is that the defenders have gotten forward towards the flag, they've taken up those defensive positions and they're now able to see right down the hill to the left and to the right and they can watch attackers just move up it's really easy pickings for them. So the situation that DICE tried to create, that initial push resulting in a quick flag capture by the attackers, that's entirely dependent on how familiar players are with the map and mode, and it's dependent on a slow defensive team not making the flag quick enough. If that specific criteria isn't met, then the defenders will likely hold on to the first sector, they'll bleed down the reinforcements, and they will win the round, and that creates a really disappointing experience for the attackers. And it turns the first sector into a shooting range for the defenders. In these kinds of linear game modes where you're moving across the map in sectors, I really do think that for the attackers, the first sector should be the easiest to capture so that you can use that momentum and move into the rest of the map and the mode can actually get moving. You can apply that to rush as well. The first sector should be the easiest for you to capture and then the last sector should be the hardest and then it works backwards for the defenders. The first sector for the defenders should be the hardest to defend and the last one should be the easiest to defend. That way you get momentum in the game mode and players can actually get moving in the mode before they get stunted right at the start. 
I really do think that the risk that DICE took here by setting the map up in this way, it was quite a big risk and I'm not sure it was the best option. I think a better option would have been to deploy two flags in this first sector. One up the hill towards the farmhouses and another one lower down towards the edge of the mountain. This would not only split up gameplay and create a more diverse and interesting initial sector, but it would also force the two teams to balance their play across two flag points instead of all running headfirst into one tiny house in the middle of the hillside. I'm just not really a fan of this first sector, but that's basically where my criticism of this map and mode ends at this point. After this, it's pretty good fun. Once you do end up moving past that first sector, which I will say is becoming more and more common as players realise how they're supposed to attack the first sector, the mode really opens up into a larger scale battle with more distinct frontline aspects to it. Moving from one flag to two flags and widening the play area, opening up those extra pathways, flanking routes and lines of sight, that really creates a nice ebb and flow here. The two flags in this sector, they're set up in a line with the B point sitting behind the A point towards the back of the sector. And this basically encourages the attacking team to use the lower left flanking route below the mountain edge to loop up and behind the A point and capture the B point first. And it totally confuses the defenders when this happens. Everyone then moves back from the A point to the B point. The attackers can move on to A and capture it. And it creates a really nice flow. Defenders know that this flanking route is going to be there, but with so much attention being focused on the A point initially, since it is closer to the sector before it, and therefore the flag that most players will fight over initially, I found that the defenders aren't covering that large flanking route as much as I thought they might be. There are no fortification positions down there on that flank to the left, which can make it a bit of an alleyway of death if a defending squad have a recon player there or a support player bipodding down it, but as I said in my video yesterday, smoke is just your best friend here on Marita, and that can really help if you're trying to push through that flanking route. You can completely cover the line of sight and push forwards. This sector does feel more like a typical setup for the breakthrough game mode. You've got the attackers slowly pushing up onto a set of flags that are heavily guarded by defenders, but there are multiple viable ways for you to attack those flags and work your way towards them, as opposed to just charging headlong into sustained machine gun fire and dying over and over again. For the defenders, the fortifications are really important in this sector as they give the A flag a lot more protection than what's available when you first start playing in the sector. The houses that sit before the A flag, they're in an elevated position and the attackers can use those houses to look into the capture area. So building up some sandbag walls around it means you give yourself cover and you break line of sight for the attackers as well. I really do like this sector quite a lot. It's definitely a slow burner for the attackers. It usually takes a fair chunk of tickets for the sector to be captured, but it's a much more enjoyable experience than the first sector. And then we've got the final sector, which is arguably my favorite of the lot. We move from two to three flags and the action is focused almost entirely within the town area. And that turns gameplay from mid to long range right down to the close range. Lots of destruction happening, defenders hiding in all the houses waiting to ambush attackers who are trying to push onto different points. And in essence, it becomes a 64 player domination section with three flags. And that makes it super chaotic. But it's the kind of chaotic that you actually want. Players are duking it out in alleyways, through windows, around objective points, and those points are constantly changing hands. That's compared to the first sector, where that close range combat just comes at the attacker's expense because they die a lot more often than the defenders do. This third sector, it's much more balanced. Once a flag is taken by the attackers, you'll find defenders flood onto the flag and try and take it back, but at the same time, the attackers have then split off to the other two objectives. Maybe they capture one, but they fail to capture the other, and then the defenders have the upper hand again. It's just a really nice backwards and forwards gameplay for the final domination of the map, and it makes it a really quite thrilling and tense end to the round. I had two rounds where in the first one, we as the attackers ended up winning, but it took us a fair few tickets to lock down all three flags at once. And then in the second round, we'd easily captured sectors one and two, but sector three, 
The defenders found some nerve and managed to hold out on us, and they won the round by bleeding down our tickets and just stopping us from capturing all three flags at the same time. And even though we didn't win that second round, I had a really good time just fighting it out and trying to capture flags as enemies would just pour in from loads of different angles. Like I said, that's kind of the chaos that you want. Sector 1, that's not the kind of chaos that you want. So overall, breakthrough on Marita isn't as bad as I initially thought it was. As time went past those first few rounds where attackers would just get stuck at Sector 1, things improved from that point. People learned what they were supposed to do to get that sector taken, and then the mode could move on to better sectors. That said, I still don't like the implementation that DICE went with for the first sector. It presents a similar issue to the first sector on Panzerstorm Breakthrough, where all of the action focuses on just one flag, making it extremely difficult for the attackers to really make that much headway. I think DICE could do better here on Marita with the first sector, but honestly, I don't really see it changing. Marita is a meat grinder map no matter how you look at it, and this sector provides that type of gameplay almost perfectly. But you guys should let me know what you think of things down below in the comments. Are you enjoying the new Marita map at the moment? Are you not a huge fan of infantry-dominated gameplay in Battlefield? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.